Now in this lesson we look at a midpoint, distance and gradient review. Firstly the midpoint. Now, the midpoint is simply the average point. So we need to take the average of the x values and then we average the y values. Let's look at an example. We're asked to find the midpoint of 1, 4 and 7 minus 2. So the midpoint equals the average x and the average y value. So let's see the average x value. What we do there is our, x, our first x value, our second x value there. We average them out by adding them. 1 plus 7 and then we divide by 2. And let's average out our y values. Okay, Our y values are 4 and minus 2. So we need to add them. 4 plus negative 2. And then we divide by 2 because we're averaging them out. Put the brackets around them. Now let's simplify this. We have 1 plus 7. Well that's 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. The next bit. 4 plus minus 2. Well that's 4 minus 2. Which is 2. Divided by 2 which is 1. So there we have it. The midpoint. 4, 1. Now the distance formula. Distance equals the big square root. And then in brackets x1 minus x2 squared plus in brackets y1 minus y2 squared. Now part 2. We're asked to find the distance between 2 minus 3 and 8, 1. Need to answer in simplest third form. So our distance formula there, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. You certainly need to be remembering that one. Now x1 minus x2. So our x values are 2 and 8. So we have 2 minus 8 squared, a plus in the middle there. And now our y values are minus 3 and 1. So we write minus 3 minus 1 in brackets squared. Now we put the square root sign. And then on the calculator, leave the square root out of it, just in brackets. Do the 2 minus 8 squared and then the th minus 3 minus 1 squared. We work that out, we get 52. Now we need to answer in simplest third form. So root 52, how can we simplify that? Well, we can write it as root 4 times root 13. Now the square root of 4, of course, is 2 times root 13. So our final answer there, 2 root 13. Now let's consider gradient. Now the gradient from a diagram, m equals the rise over the run. So if the line is going uphill from left to right, we say it has a positive gradient. If the line is going downhill from left to right, we say it has a negative gradient. The gradient formula is given by m equals y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Now let's work from a diagram firstly. Let's say we've got a line there and it cuts the x-axis at minus 2 and the y-axis at 3. Now the gradient is the rise over the run and it's certainly going uphill so we say it's positive. Now the rise, well, from 0 to 3 is a rise of 3. The run from minus 2 to 0 is a run of 2. So we have 3 over 2 there and that's the way we leave it. Next one, let's say the y-intercept is 2 this time and the x-intercept is 6. Gradient, rise over run. Now it's going downhill, so it's negative. So the first thing we write is minus. The rise is 2 over the run, which is 6. So this time minus 2 over 6, we can simplify that, becomes minus 1 over 3, minus a third. Now let's use the gradient formula. So we're asked to find the gradient of the line passing through the point 4, minus 2 and 6, 3. So let's write the formula firstly. Now the y1 minus y2, well the y values are minus 2 and 3. So we write equals minus 2, minus 3. Over the x values which are 4 and 6. So we write 4, minus 6. And we simplify that, ends up being 5 over 2. And note that often we write the gradient in terms of an improper fraction. Okay, So 5 over 2, we'd write that rather generally, generally than writing 2.5 or 2.5. Now the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus b, where m is the gradient and b the y-intercept. 
Let's look at some examples. We're asked to find the equation of each of the lines. In part A, we've got a diagram where the line's cutting through at minus 4 on the y-axis and 2 on the x-axis. So we can work out the gradient firstly, the rise over the run, where the rise is 4, the run is 2, so it's 4 over 2, it is positive, and that simplifies to be 2. Now using the y equals mx plus b equation, y equals, now mx, where m is 2, so we write 2x, and b is the y-intercept. Okay, it's cutting at minus 4, that's what we write. So there we have it, the equation y equals 2x minus 4. In part b, okay, this time the line is going through the origin, and it's also going through a point minus 1, 3. So we could mark that as minus 1, the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate, there would be 3 there, matching up with that point. So m equals rise over the run, the gradient, so at this time going downhill, so straight away it's negative. So let's write the negative down. Now the rise over the run. Well the rise is 3 and the run is 1. So it will be 3 over 1. So we have minus 3 over 1 and that is simplifies to be minus 3. So using the equation there, y equals mx plus b, we'll write y equals, now mx, where m is minus 3, so we've got minus 3x. And then we have plus b but b is actually where it cuts the y-axis, which is at 0. So we've got nothing to add there, so that's it, y equals minus 3x. Question C there, we've got a diagram. We're going to mark the point 4, and if we have a line that is horizontal, simply, the line is y equals 4. As simple as that. In D there, we'll have a look at a vertical line this time. Let's say it goes through minus 2. Okay, it's hitting the x-axis at minus 2, it's vertical. Simply the equation x equals minus 2. Now let's consider parallel and perpendicular lines. Now parallel lines have the same gradient. In other words, m1 is equal to m2. The first gradient equals the second gradient. Part 1, we're asked to show that the lines y equals 3 over 2x minus 4 and 3x minus 2y plus 7 equals 0 are parallel. So let's consider that first equation. y equals 3 on 2 times x minus 4. That will give us the gradient, okay? The gradient, the first gradient, equals 3 over 2. It's the coefficient of x. Now the second one, before finding the gradient, we'll need to rearrange that. Let's write the equation down again. We need to eventually get y by itself. So at the moment, let's bring the minus 2y over, so it becomes positive. So I'll have 2y equals, and the 3x and 7 has stayed as is. Now, at the moment we've got 2y to get 1y, we need to divide by 2. So let's put everything over 2. So on the left there, you'll see the 2's cancel, so good, we have y equals, and we have 3x over 2, which you can write that as 3 over 2 times x, and then plus 7 over 2. Now, once we've written in that form, then yes, we can see what the gradient is. The gradient equals 3 over 2, okay? So that's our second gradient. So we've got m1 equals 3 on 2. We've got m2 equals 3 on 2 also. So therefore, we say the lines are parallel, since m1 equals m2. Now, the gradients of perpendicular lines are the negative reciprocals of each other. Now, in other words, the products of the gradients is minus 1. m1 minus m2 equals minus 1. So that's the condition for perpendicular lines. Now, the idea of negative reciprocals, probably best just to show you a few examples of that. Let's say if the first gradient was 3 on 2, then we'd say that the perpendicular gradient is minus 2 thirds. All right, so we've taken the negative of it and we've flipped the fraction over. On the other hand, let's say if there was a gradient of minus 2, then the perpendicular gradient would be 1 half. Alright, so again the minus 2, we've changed the negative to a positive and flipped the 2 over to make it a half. Now we're asked to consider the points A, B and the origin. We've got to show that AO is perpendicular to AB. Always good to draw a little sketch here with these, it'll help you in trying to understand what we're trying to do. 
A is the 0 0.31. It doesn't have to be accurate, but it's just a sketch to help us. B is the 0.5 minus 5, and we've got the origin there O. Now we need to show that AO is perpendicular to AB. So let's just draw those lines in. We're trying to show that's a right angle. So because we're dealing with perpendicular lines, we'll be interested in the gradient. So there's our gradient formula. Now O, the origin, of course, is 0, 0. So let's consider AO firstly. The gradient of AO, there's A, and there's O. So we're using the y values firstly, so we have 1 and 0 on the top, 1 minus 0, over the x values where are 3 and 0. So we put it over 3 minus 0, and that simplifies to be 1 third. Now we need to consider AB. So the gradient of AB, or there's our A, there's our B. So using the formula, we're interested in our y values firstly, 1 and minus 5. So we've got to go 1 minus minus 5. We end up being 1 plus 5. And that is over x1 minus x2. So there are x values there, 3 and 5. So it's over 3 minus 5. And when we simplify that, we end up getting minus 3. So just looking at it, we've got one gradient a third. The other gradient is minus 3, which is the negative reciprocal. So in our mind we say, yes, that's good. That means they're perpendicular. But the easiest way to show it then is to use this. m1 times m2 is minus 1. So we say that the gradient AO times the gradient AB is equal to, we've got a third and minus 3 there, so we multiply a third times minus 3, and that works out to be minus 1. So if we've got the product of the gradients to be minus 1, therefore we say then that AO is perpendicular to AB.